going live. Hey. We're live! Hey! This Yo. is my Sim, and I've got Rob Sylvan. Hello! And Sean McCormick. And this Hi. is our... <laughs> <laughs> this is our, our monthly Lightroom Hangout, brought to you by Photo Focus. We're glad you're here. And yeah. uh, I'm glad Sean and Rob are here, too, because I tried to do this alone once, and it was miserable. Yeah, I had to do that, too, once. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, Sean, we did it on a Saturday morning, and, and Rob is three hours ahead of me. And... Oh. I slipped right through it. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, Rob yeah. did it on a Saturday morning. Yeah, <laughs> I did it, 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 but it was fun. <laughs> and this is uh, this is part two of our summer of European friendship. Uh, That's right. That's last right. last month we had uh, the lovely Victoria Bampton on, and this this week all the way from Ireland we have Sean McCormick, uh, who I'm super excited to finally get to talk to. I feel like I've known Sean for a long time and various Lightroom related forums and whatnot, and so I finally, well actually I did get to hear his voice, because he actually does a pretty good American accent, I heard on some <laughs> other hangout, um, so I had to check that out, but I've heard him on other podcasts and things, And uh, but I finally get to talk to him, so I'm really excited uh, to have Sean on here, and Sean, uh, in this latest release of Lightroom, also put out another Lightroom book, he's written other Lightroom books before, and He's written for Photoshop User Magazine and his own Lightroom uh, blog uh, and probably many other things. Uh, so, Sean, tell us a little bit about, about your book. Uh, it was a lot of work. We start off with that. <laughs> <laughs> this is The Indispensable Guide to Lightroom CC uh, on Rocky Nook. And uh, it was about 10,000 words a week for uh, three months solid. It was pretty intense. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, trying, to, trying to get it all together and get it hidden just after Lightroom itself came out as well. So lots and lots of hard work. It basically covers the whole of Lightroom, uh, including all the new features, uh, stuff like Lightroom Web, uh, Lightroom Mobile, uh, H all HDR merging, panel merging, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, generally kind of looking at pretty much everything that's in Lightroom in about 500 pages. Yeah, it's wow. it's really an excellent, excellent resource. And I, I know you're really a technical guy. You're a sound guy, too. I mean, you, you're yeah. a photographer. I mean, you're you're all in the technical stuff and uh, I've known for I've known Sean from him answering questions and asking great Lightroom questions in various forms over the years so he really he knows Lightroom inside and out and uh, I'm really really excited for you to have that have that done I know how much work it is yeah. to do that yeah. so uh, so Rocky Nook has even given us uh, a special code to get 40% off that uh, book via the link in Sean's uh, Lower so thirds I there. Oh, I still have it because I got it off there. <laughs> well, when he gets it back, <laughs> it's on there, and um, and you'll if you're interested in that book, I highly recommend it. Uh, you save forty percent off of that. So thank you, Rocky Nook, for that. Um, so also uh, thanks to our there we go. It's light. It's LR Hangout is the code. If it's a little slightly cut off, you get the idea. LR Hangout Light Hangout. That's the uh, that's the code to save. So. Uh, big thanks to Adobe and HDR Soft 2 for sponsoring uh, right. this Hangout. And at the end of this Hangout, we actually have some giveaways for any of uh, our viewers who survived uh, hanging in with us that, lo that long. Um, Adobe has given us a one-year subscription to the photography plan. That's um, Photoshop and Lightroom, latest versions of both, uh, for one year. It's about a $99 value, uh, right? Or more. No, yeah. Uh, excellent deal. So... Thanks to Adobe for that. Um, Sean has offered uh, a, a giveaway as well, um, one of your Lightroom plugins, correct? Yes, um, correct. And uh, LRB exhibition, which is right. basically creates a website. Yeah, so we'll be taking a closer look at that soon. Um, a mutual <coughs> friend of ours, Matthew Compagna, who runs the Turning Gate, uh, third-party web galleries. If you really are into creating a website with Lightroom, uh, we'll show you the link to that, and he has uh, generously donated a $100 uh, value worth of uh, his plug-in. Um, so we'll, we'll take a closer look at that, too. Um, and I think, I think that's all our stuff for our giveaway. Right? I think that's all our stuff for the giveaway. Yeah, so the way to enter into the giveaway is to ask us a question via the Q&A uh, at any point during the Hangout. Just pop in there and ask a question, and we'll try and get or, to it. Or just say hello. 
just make hello. a comment in the in the Q and A. Yeah, you could just say hi. Um, and by doing that, by sh by appearing in that Q and A, that's how Levi captures your name for the giveaway at the end. All right. So, I think that's. Did, got, did you yeah. mention the sponsors when I got knocked off that time? Yes, we did. So we went through <laughs> our, our sponsors, and so so Sean, where actually are you in the world? I am in Galway, in the west of Ireland. West of Ireland. So you're way, yeah. way over there. So um, over how's there. the weather this summer right there? It's been one of the worst summers on records, but I'm looking out right now, and there's still sun. All right. That's why the curtain is closed, because it's way too bright otherwise. When, when you say worst summer, does that mean it's been really wet or really dry? Uh, well, Galway's really the wettest city in Ireland, so it's been even wetter than usual. Oh, really? really? Right. Yeah. We've been super dry out here, so. <sighs> All right. So, web module. Um, the web module is a funny part of Lightroom. It's one of those one of those areas of Lightroom that, Kind of gets a lot of heat uh, from a lot of people. Um, it's granted uh, out of the box. It's not terribly robust, um, but it kind of does what it needs to do in in the sense of creating a standalone gallery. So, Sean, what? How do you describe the web module to folks when they ask you about it? The web module is Adobe basically giving you something that lets you create a gallery of your images that you can put online. It's very, very basic. There are four options that you have for it, um, which are the classic grid, square, and track galleries, but that's it. They literally just let you put up one block of images and maybe have a link to somewhere else. That's about all they do. So it's kind of like a standalone web page, yeah. not really a web full-blown website. No, it's just something you add to a website that you already have. And for that, you need to have your own hosting because you're uploading to a host. Right, so you need to have a domain, have a domain. And with that, also uh, have hosting uh, yep. and have it via, well, I guess you don't have to have FTP, but that makes it a lot easier. It does. Um, and so Lightroom doesn't do those parts. Those are things you have to do on your own. On your own. And then, yep. and then Lightroom will let you essentially upload the files uh, yep. to your hosting service. Yep. That's All exactly right. it. Um, and and those files, as far, you know, for a lot of people I've you know worked with who are photographers primarily, um, you don't have to really know HTML or coding or anything like that. No, nope. uh, it's for it not being terribly robust. It's also pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's uh, to, it's to really really straightforward. Yeah. Um, so oh, probably. Exactly. Uh, the most complicated part is is really the uploading. <laughs> the, the, everything else is pretty visual. You see it as you go. We'll we'll yep. take a look at that. But we'll we'll take a look at the uh, the uploading part too. Um, I know some people are asking questions, and we will uh, try and get to this too. But so there's the web module, and we're going to look at that. But Lightroom has other ways of getting your photos to the web too, right? Yep. So what uh, what are some other web well, I mean, there's, there's lots of uh, services that you can use online for photo sharing, stuff like Flickr, SmugMug, and you can use public services for those. Uh, that's a, a part of Lightroom that I don't have anything set up on this because we only talked about it at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to have it that's all. That's all right. That's something we use all the time. So. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to screen share for a second. Uh, click on the magic screen share. And share. Share the so whole desktop, right? Yeah. Right, okay. Oh wait, no, uh, so, uh, Sean. Here's, oh. here's one funny thing about. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you want me to do the whole desktop? Okay. Let's yeah, see. because the side panels don't show if you choose just the window. I, it's uh, a weird thing. It's not you. It's them. It's not you. All right. How's that? What do we see? Good. Yeah, That's there perfect. we go. Get your whole screen. Okay. So, public services is down here at the bottom of the left panel in library. And uh, because this is my laptop with a tiny hard drive, I haven't anything set up on it. But basically, these are services that come with it, uh, and you can get a smug one as well. The smug one, smug one used to ship with it, I think, and then you have to get it yourself now. Is that right? I Levi? believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought um, I thought it still I, came with CC. I'm not I'm not sure. The or it, one? it might. They they had talked about not doing it because the one from the site, the actual site, is more up to date. Mm. Um, so maybe there's now I haven't set anything up, so as I haven't installed it, it may well be here. I did have a SmugMug account for a while, um, but I just didn't have time to maintain it. That's just time <laughs> is right. everything. So what you can do is you set these up, and you basically, just, like I say, for Facebook, what you do is you can authorize on Facebook, and it will then allow you to upload images to albums that you can name here. And all you have to do is click authorize, yeah. and it all you have to click is authorize, and it just works. Yeah, that's it. 
and um, so you can share to the web directly from Lightroom that way. Right. Then, then the it works like a like a collection. You can just yeah. add Would folders you... and drag and drop pictures in there. Yeah, that's exactly it. I'm going to jump back now. Um, Levi, so you use Smug Mug. I do. And pretty heavily. Would you just yes. show like just what that looks like for yes. a superpower okay. user? Yeah, let me uh, share my screen. <clears throat> and so when you use a, a third-party service, you're not using Lightroom's web module at all. You're, you're just using nope. Lightroom as, a, using as Lightroom. the mechanism to upload to that service. Yep. And then all the configuration of how things look are all done uh, on the, through that web service. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and real quick, I was going to show you. Uh, so I was just adding 500px as a uh, as a tool as as a published service. And so to do that, all I did was I Googled 500px Lightroom plugin. Lightroom plugin for 500px, and the first hit is 500px's Lightroom plugin. And then you just click download, and then you go to Lightroom. And uh, well, so now it's installed. But you uh, <laughs> you go you, to the uh, plugin manager. Yeah, you go to the plugin manager, which is right here under the file menu. And then you just click add, add. and navigate to your downloads where that publisher where that uh, plugin just landed here. You're better oh, off yeah. putting it in its own folder, though. I, I should, shouldn't I? And I should put yeah. it in the, uh, away from my downloads. Yeah, because you'll probably clear out your download. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, you, you guys are seeing my screen, right? Yeah, yeah sir. Yeah. yeah. And, and the to... thing, you know, the thing people can okay. remember: any one of these plugins, this where, wherever you download it from, there's going to be instructions on how to install it. It's not super complicated. So if you don't get it all in what Light Levi's doing there, um, right? It's it's really simple. It is um, really simple. And so here's here's my smug mugs, and I, I happen to manage, gosh, five different smug mugs, <laughs> smug yeah. mug accounts um, on mine. Then don't here show, I've, I've got. Don't show any of that surgery stuff. Yeah, no, we'll stay away from those. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I just organize my uh, my whole site with with folders, and then there's subfolders within those, and there can be subfolders within those as well, and. When you when you want to make a gallery, which is where the where some actual pictures are, you just you just click on pictures and drag them in, or you right click on the parent folder and say create gallery, and then you name it. And then I usually have already selected some photos, and so I, I click include selected photos, and then you click create, and then they're here and they work just like a collection um, up up above here, except that when you when you go in here. You've got a publish button, and if you pu I had to go to some place where I have pictures connected. <laughs> well, you get you get <laughs> the idea. <laughs> yeah, you get the idea. Um, and you, you just click this publish button, and suddenly your pictures appear online. And there's a link right here too. There's Doug. Uh, and you yeah, there's Doug. And you click the link, and it takes you right to that page. And so my SmugMug page is as I've designed it on SmugMug, and I'm just populating it with pictures from Lightroom. Right. So all that can, all the way that looks right there on that web page, that's all that configuration is done on the SmugMug side. That's right. Yep. And Lightroom just uploading the photos. Now, does SmugMug have the integration with comments and things like that? So you see that back in Lightroom when, when people yes, comment? Yes, you, you can get... I don't know if you can see the comments. You can see... You can you can set it up so that they create as as my clients look and they can uh, click their favorites and click a like button okay. and then that syncs back to Lightroom and gives me a collection of just their likes as in well. the published service. Right. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just looking through some of the questions as you as you've been doing that. And so, um, and one person, uh, Professor Mary, uh, asked, uh, "Can you post comments when you send a photo to Facebook using Lightroom?" And that made me think about that for SmugMug. Yeah, so when you use those published services, th there's some differences between uh, functionality on the different websites, right? They each have their own kind of take on how their API works with Lightroom. But most of them have some functionality so that if someone puts a comment on a photo that's being managed through that published service, that the next time you update that published service, you'll see that comment. Right. Um, or, or that like. 
Yeah. Ed's got a great question. He says, how about Instagram? <laughs> That's great for you. So Levi has a workaround, right? <laughs> yeah, this is my this is my favorite hack because you can't publish to Instagram from your computer. It has to be from a mobile device. Um, Sean, do you do you do anything with Instagram? Oh, I do. Yes, and I do cheat getting stuff to it. I have some free. <laughs> What's yours? I actually have free Instagram templates. And what I do is I go use the print module. So I have a lot of templates which are on Lightroom-blog.com, and then. Um, I use them to basically, it's just a square print module uh, template. And so I will, exp I print it out into a folder on Dropbox. And then uh -huh. I'll open it on Dropbox on the phone uh, and save it. And then I will put it into, that's how I do Sean, it. Sean, I'm going to blow your mind right now, Sean. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I just use Lightroom Mobile. You just oh, publish yeah, 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 yeah. Just publish them to a, to a Lightroom gallery or to your collection in yeah, Lightroom, true. and uh, well, I better show it, huh? Let me share yeah, my screen. Yeah, well, and that brings the third option for how Lightroom integrates with the web is so um, Lightroom Mobile. People think about it primarily with uh, their computer and a mobile device, iPhone or Android, but um, Lightroom Mobile also has a Lightroom Web component, and uh, when you uh, are in a Lightroom uh, mobile synced collection. If Levi gets there, we'll see it. Uh, do you see me? I see you, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you see, my, you see my screen, right? I do, yes. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, yeah, so all you have to do is, with collections, you can create a collection and name it whatever you like and then um, include pictures or not. Let's, let's just call this, uh, call it Doug, and include selected photos. Okay. And so here I've got this collection and it's got one photo in it. And if I want to add more collections, of course, I can go back to the live to my folder where those pictures are, narrow them down to the to the two stars, and drag. Oops, go back to my collection now. Collection over here, and there's Doug, and I can just drag and drop pictures into this collection, and all these pictures then show up there. And when I click on the collection only, then it shows me those photos. Now, if we click this little checkbox right here, then it's going to now sync this collection with Lightroom Mobile. That's what this little lightning bolt thing is, is syncing with the web. And, uh, and then on my phone, can I demonstrate this on my phone, Rob? What do you think? Uh, I, think it's, <laughs> I think it's risky. You could try. Let's try it here. Let's try it here. Stop. Screen sharing, go to me, and then I may have a big, huge glare on this thing. But here's my phone, and I don't know, this will work. I thought you were going to do it the other way. Okay. Oh, the uh, with the the yeah. no, app, this... the connection on the computer. No, yeah. I don't have that thing. Oh, hey, look, there's Rob. Hey. All right. <laughs> so now I'm in. Let me brighten this all up here. I'm in my Lightroom mobile app, and. If we go back out here to my to my folder view, then I should now have a Doug folder showing up sometime soon after it refreshes. But uh, this this is my my go-to one. It says Instagram, and all my Instagram photographs, all, all the ones that I want to share on Instagram, show up right here. And uh, then I can I can even make adjustments to them here if I want to. But mostly, I just press the share button up here, and then uh, click share, and then save image. And so I didn't, I didn't have to go to Dropbox. I didn't have to export and put it in a Dropbox folder, and then go to the Dropbox one. Just go there, and then when I go to Instagram, it's right there, ready to roll in my in my picture feed, and cool. we're and it's it's pretty quick. Um, so that, that's the, it's that's the that's short answer, Ed. That's the short answer. That's the short answer. Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, it's even better. Even one more thing I, have to, I just have to show you because it, it makes it so simple. What were you going to say, Sean? I'm sorry. I cut you off. Oh, no. I was going to say it would be great if you could, instead of having to save it, if you could just share directly to Instagram. I know. Why, why don't we have that, that connection from Lightroom Mobile to Instagram? Um, that would be ideal. So then back... 
in Lightroom, the last thing that you should do, I've set my, see this little plus sign by my Instagram folder? That little plus sign means that this is my target collection. So now, when I'm on any photograph anywhere in Lightroom and I press the B key as in boy, that photograph now shows up in my Instagram collection and is automatically published out with, um, with my syncing. These are in order of time, so it's hidden back here somewhere, but that just showed up. Uh, oh, there he is. Yeah, so that just showed up because I pressed the B key. Anyway, that's it. Cool. Um, so that's, the, that's how to do Instagram. But I want to show, <laughs> one, I want to show one thing related to that uh, that ties back into the whole web thing. And then we will uh, move on and look at, at the web module in much more depth. But I, I think this is relevant. So let me show you my screen. So I have um, some Lightroom Mobile synced collections here. Do you, are the, is that showing up now? Yes. Yeah. All right. So um, up here above uh, that collection that's synced with Lightroom Mobile, once it's synced, I can click this Make Public button. And what it does is it generates this URL. It's going to show up here. It's going to look short here, but it's not actually that short. Um, and so this is Lightroom's uh, Lightroom Web. So all of your galleries, all, all your collections, I mean, that uh, you sync through Lightroom Mobile, you have the option to make them public and share out that URL, right? So you can either share this big monster or back in the Lightroom uh, module here, we can copy that clip to your clipboard and you can share that out. And then when people are looking at your photos via Lightroom Web, um, they can like them if they're if they're signed into their Adobe ID, using their Adobe ID, uh, and they can even leave comments. And then those likes and comments are synced back into that same collection back in inside of Lightroom. Uh, so there's not a whole lot of you know configuration you can do out here um, inside the Lightroom web. There's a slideshow, um, but it's you know, if you have Lightroom CC, sorry, if you have Lightroom 6, you won't be able to do this. But if you have Lightroom CC, um, you have this option, and it's kind of already built in. You don't need hosting. You don't doesn't count against your Adobe storage or anything like that. So it's kind of a neat way to um, quickly kind of share stuff out. So like yeah. on some of the trips I had this summer, I, I'm notorious for taking pictures all you know when I'm with my friends and family and never sharing them. <laughs> right. And so yeah. now I've just been putting them in these collections, sync it to Lightroom Mobile. Then I just send them the link, and then I'm just I'm just done with it, and uh, they stop they stop pestering me. So uh, so I'll put if anyone wants to check that out, I'll put that link to that little gallery I just shared in my lower thirds. If you want to check it out, um, you can leave comments or whatever, and you can play with that and see what that looks like. Um, what I often do too uh, is I use Bitly and just make a, a custom short link, so it makes it a little easier to to share out there. But Rob, so, would you show me one more time right where you are in Lightroom there to see the uh, the web page? So inside of Lightroom, yeah, up at the top of when you once you've synced a gallery a collection with Lightroom Mobile, you'll see a Make Public button. Oh. Click that, and that generates the URL that appears right next to it. Oh yeah, there it is. You click it; that's going to open it in your browser. If you want, then want to no longer share that publicly, you just click Make Private, and then that goes away. Excellent. Uh, from Lightroom Web. Um, but if you go to, um, if you're logged in, you go to Lightroom.adobe.com. That's where this uh, this stuff lives. All right. Cool. Sean, did I miss anything on that Lightroom Web? Nope, that, that was pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you know. It's it's there. It's worth checking out if you want to check it out. So, and I'll put that link in here. So, some questions are are coming in. If you have other questions, uh, please feel free to uh, ask those. Uh, let's see, my lower third update. Um, yeah. There's a question there about any. Is there any way web, Lightroom Web Module works in tandem with a Smugmunker Zen Folio type website? There are third-party plugins like the one we're going to talk about shortly that allow you to publish to the website, and um, but that's the only real way that you have it through uh, the actual web module itself. Excellent. Yeah. So hopefully, um, 
we'll, we'll take a little more look at that. So, Professor Mary hoping to learn how to post photos to Facebook, Flickr, 500px, and other sites in an easy few-click way. Uh, you know, each one of those services has their own plugin. Once you install them, you can configure them. You have to log into each one. But once they're set up, it's pretty much one. It's a few clicks. The biggest part for each of those is just the initial setup, which isn't really that hard. Um, all right, so um, I think we got I think we got that. Uh, any other good questions? Oh, so Jack, Jack Larson, we're sorry, we <laughs> Jack won last month one of the prizes. Yes. We are re we resubmitted your name and we're trying to get it to you. We're going to resubmit it with this batch, so we haven't forgotten you. We do apologize that haven't gotten to you yet, but we haven't forgotten. So and we're glad you're still here. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming back. Maybe you'll win again. <laughs> Maybe you'll win again. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks, Jack. Let's see, any other questions? So I understand that Lightroom mobile app takes up space on your mobile device. Do the collections of, of photos or whatever photos you sync also take up more space on your phone or iPad? Well, uh, yes and no, but I, Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the way the app works, it really manages that space pretty well, so it shouldn't really impact uh, yeah, your it does. user. When you're uploading files from uh, Lightroom Mobile, um, you you can have a, you can either have previews that are up there, or you can actually uh, decide to sync uh, lossy DNG versions of the file, which are much smaller versions of the raw file. And um, if you when you just preview them when you're online, um, they're just kind of temporarily stored on the phone. But to actually edit them when you're offline, you need to actually download files to it, and those files take up space. Now, a lossy DNG file, uh, in this case, would be less than probably a tenth of the size of the original RAW, so not as much space as your RAW files would take up. Yeah. Uh, but it still gives you the full control that you would have. They're the same as smart previews, basically. Yeah, it's, it's only 2048 uh, pixels, and so it's, it's uh, not a very big picture. 20, 20, is it 2560 or 2048 on that one? <laughs> it's, it's, 20, it's less than 3,000. Uh, 3, yeah, yeah. I mean, just... <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, here's the way to think about I know, it. Well, I know smart previews are smart previews are 2560. It's very possible that mm. the DNGs on the mobile are smaller. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's less space than all the photos you're taking with your phone and never That's deleting. True. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you, never think, you never think about that. You know, all those stupid things you take pictures of and, and takes up space. So, right. uh, so it, it does get it does get managed up pretty well. And also, and you can add them from your phone and sync them back to. Your desktop Lightroom. Yeah. So yeah. we did a whole show on Lightroom That's Mobile yeah. in our archive. So all of these Hangouts are, you know, they're archived on PhotoFocus.com, and we did a whole one on Lightroom Mobile. So uh, that might answer some of those things. We probably should do another one because they keep updating that thing so frequently that right. everything we did before is all old news. So um, any other questions? Let's see. Uh, Oh, what was that? Yeah, there's a few here that... that we oh, is there... It, it keeps moving. That's why I lost it. So Kenneth know, is asking, around. is there a storage amount limit in Lightroom Mobile? No. There's no... It doesn't count against your... Um, I mean, could you sync... Create a collection of 300,000 photos and sync it up there? I guess you could. Actually, I, I thought there was a 1,000 photo limit. Is there? There there was at some point. I don't know if there's still it. Is it per collection or total? I don't, it could I don't be per think collection. it's... Because yeah. mine mine has 800 in it and 114. I'm right about a thousand in there. I maybe. don't think it, it's not intended to be like a out, an online storage backup right, of, your, storage. of your thing. So I don't know. Is there some? There probably is some limit, right? But I don't. I don't. It's not widely published. If I if it, if there is, do you know of any limit, Sean? Of I don't know. Yeah, I don't it would know. be a shame if we were the reason. Hey, if you if you find it, let us know. If you if you break <laughs> it, you let us know. All right, so, hey, should we move on and look at some of the web module stuff um, itself? So that's kind of, so Lightroom, it's got the web module, it's got published services to all these online photo sharing sites, and then there's Lightroom Mobile. Kind of three ways short of just exporting and delivering them that way. So let's take a closer look at uh, the web module itself. And so, Sean, what, what's new in Lightroom CC, Lightroom 6? Uh, Real quick, bef before you dive into that, oh. Wait. We better pause for station identification one more time. Oh, okay. Here. Yeah, that's we true. Get moving. <laughs> we're halfway through. We're halfway through. It's moving right along, and we're sure glad that you guys are here with us. And we're very grateful to um, Adobe and also HDRsoft for sponsoring us this week and uh, this month. 
Um, a, HDR Soft makes the wonderful Photomatic software that helps us to really create um, the kind of HDR that you want, whether it's the crazy tone map stuff or remarkably natural, realistic-looking stuff. Photomatix does it well. And, of course, Adobe provides us with marvelous tools like Lightroom and Photoshop and uh, all the other creative software that allows us to create the visions we have in our brains and push them out there for other people to see. Yeah, and thanks to photofocus.com for letting us come on once a month and, and do this uh, with you all. So there's a ton of content on Photofocus. I can't believe you how much content gets put out there uh, every day from an incredible group of uh, writers and photographers and people. Just love them. Got to meet, hang out with so many at Photoshop World uh, a few weeks back and uh, just just wonderful folks. So. So thank you. And so keep asking questions so you can get in that prize that we're guaranteed to eventually get to you somehow. That's right. Yeah, leave us a, <laughs> leave us a comment or a question, and that enters you in the raffle. All right. So Lightroom Web, the web module. Light the what's web new? module. So what's new, what's new in Lightroom CC, Lightroom 6, in the web module? Well, the web module has been uh, sorely, sorely, sorely... Uh, Ignored <laughs> for a while, <laughs> did it? <laughs> I, especially by Levi. <laughs> yes, I had to unhide mine today. It's true. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it hadn't seen any love for a long time. But with uh, six and CC, it's gotten some little bits of love, uh, and those little bits of love are a completely new preview engine. So it's now switched. So basically, it's using Chrome under the hood to preview. So that oh, means that HTML5 galleries work correctly and preview correctly in Lightroom 6, which they didn't in 5. They had a very limited engine um, based on Flash. And that's the other thing that's really, really big, is that there are no Flash galleries in web anymore. Flash is gone. Gone. Wow. Um, Adobe of, got rid of Flash. Uh, Adobe, the <laughs> makers and owners of Flash, decided that there will be no Flash galleries in Lightroom anymore. All right. Yeah. And what's, what was one of the drawbacks of a Flash gallery? You couldn't view them on mobile devices or on iPhones specifically. <laughs> on iPhones, yeah. anyway. Yeah. iPhones and iPads. Yeah, so that was a bit of a drawback. But there are other... other we don't need to bash Flash, but... No, no, no. no it's it gone. It's over. It's gone. It's gone. Uh, so, so they're now. So because of that, they've made changes to uh, the Lightroom HTML gallery. There was two main galleries. There was the HTML gallery and the Flash gallery. So Flash gallery is gone, and so the HTML gallery got a makeover, and it's now called the Classic gallery. Yeah. Do you want to show us? You want to pop yeah. over and yeah. take over? Let me share screen first. Share the entire screen first, yes, please. Uh, yeah, that's sure. just a funny Lightroom thing. Uh, let's see if we have any other questions here. Uh, that are we hey, could take, easily... take a look at Elena's question and, and see if, if you can uh, have any input on that one. Okay. Uh, nice to meet you. Having... When the time comes. For uh, some reason, I understand my smart class synced with. Can I keep going? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was me reading out loud. I have my lips up <laughs> Yeah, so this is uh, the. We can see my screen, okay. Yes. Because obviously I can't see what you're seeing. So this is the classic gallery, which looks exactly the same as the HTML gallery. Um, so the idea with it is that you just have a grid, a basic grid, and you click on an image, and it will open and show a larger version. Okay? And okay. So with this gallery, you can actually click inside the gallery and change names. So let's say I wanted to go... Fashion, just call that fashion. Well, yeah, spell it right. That was fashion. awesome. Just yes, <laughs> that's the Irish, Irish spelling. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So, and you click back to the index, and the content generates as you work. So, basically, it gives you a grid, and it paginates all the images that you're in. And um, so, you can select different types of images that'll show up. So, you can have all of the images. You can have images that are selected, which in this case is one, or you can say have images that are flagged. So, these are the images that are in that collection that's flagged. Uh, so this gives you a basic gallery that you can put up online. And you click Next, go through the images. Um, so very quickly, just to go down through them. So you can set all of these different things for us. So like I said, as well as being able to type on the main page itself, you can type inside each of these panels. Now there's four panels that are inside every gallery, which are Site Info, Color Palette, Appearance, and Image Info. There's also Output Settings and Upload Settings, but they're the same for everything. So the, the other four can be different. So like we see with the grid, right, I can change the grid. You have this little 
icon here warning us that uh, we're not going to see changes to grid unless we go back to grid. So we're going to go back to grid. Oh, so index means grid here. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah index will bring you back to the main grid on, on the page. So as you can see, I can drag out here, and you're making different sizes for the, the actual grid itself. Now, the images inside the grid are fixed. You can't change those thumbnail sizes. Now, okay. what you can do is you can, you can change the size of the large images. And again, just a little warning icon to say if you make a change here, it's not going to be visible on us we're looking at, looking at the actual image page. So if I jump this to 900, I'm not going to actually see it until I go in and click on an image. Oh, okay, so that's the size of the image we'll see when we click on it online. Yeah. Is, is yeah. that many pixels? Yeah. The, on the image page, as they call it. Okay. Is, is that and the width or is that the height? It's, it's, it's actually both at the same time. And what it does is... I don't really want to talk about the code, but inside the code, it basically says <laughs> height, height equals width. Copy the height from the width. And uh, ah. so what it does is it figures out, well, which one is the longest, and that one then becomes the longest dimension, basically. So, so if it, was, it kind of treats it like a square and every yeah, image. Yeah, and it, whatever fits. So that's 900 yeah. pixels wide, whereas that one is 900 pixels high, or 983 pixels high, rather, to be exact there. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. So... You can start off. Well, let's jump. Let's make it much smaller so that we can actually see it on my screen. <laughs> uh, what do we go for? Oh no, we don't want that's quality. You know, the wrong slider. I jumped down too much. Okay, so that's a little more visible on the screen. So back to the index for a second, and we'll just talk very quickly about what this gallery does. Uh, so do it in order so that it makes more sense. Uh, mm -hmm. So these are items you can fill in. So you can describe what's going on in the gallery. And you can, at the bottom, you've got a contact name, which can be a website or a, a mail link. And the way you make it a mail link is just have this mail to uh, with a, a colon afterwards and then put in your email address, oh, and that becomes, that becomes a web link. And instead of uh, what's happening at the top, you can also decide to include your uh, 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 identity plate. So you can have a logo in there. And it takes your default name from your account uh, initially. So that's why that's a Sean McCormick there. And passing through here, you can also change the, the colors in it. So you don't have to go for the basic gray. You could have black text. And so you choose this from the color picker. So I'm just going to click down through here and have a look. Detail text, I'm going to leave it the same. Detail text is the text on the uh, page with the larger image. So that's the detailed page. And go for a white background. Uh, detail mat, again, that's the area around the image on the detail page. So I'm just making them all white. And go for a lighter color on the cells. Go for a white color on the rollover. And we'll see what the rollover does in a second. Uh, the grid lines. You can get rid of the grid lines by making them white, or there's also an option to turn off the grid lines as well. So I'm just going to make them white here. And you can opt to have the numbers a different color if you want. So make the numbers a horrible, horrible color there. So now the rollover should roll over. Uh, no, it's not rolling over on me. I'm not going to ask why. It's supposed to, <laughs> right. to change. This is live, so these things happen. <laughs> That's so right. Rollover, the rollover color is supposed to change color, uh, but it hasn't. Um, so if I click, I'm going to force it to reload, just in case. That's why. All right, okay. So that little uh, button there will force a reload. Um, the way Lightroom changes the settings is it actually has JavaScript built into the plugin that forces it to every time you make certain changes that it will reset, but sometimes it doesn't want to do that, so you have to force a reset. In Matthew Campagna's gallery that we're going to see in a few minutes, he actually has a shortcut built in, and if you want to make a change, you have to force to refresh yourself, hmm. um, which in some ways, it's, it's very similar to how the bridge galleries work. But uh, it's, sometimes it's a better thing, because sometimes you could be doing things and waiting and lighting, doing nothing like we just saw there. So it's good to have some way of making it do what you want it to do. Um, down further, we have the appearance section, and we've seen the grid. Um, you can have drop shadows on the photo, which you can see just around the edge of the photos there. And then the section borders uh, can be turned on and off as well, which are these ones up here. And we also have the photo borders, which I said, you can see that black line around it, but you can change the color here as well. The image pages, we've seen the size of the image, and uh, that's a border on the photo on the detail page as well. So. Let me go in here and just show a detail page. And uh, so you can change the width here, or you can turn them off completely. Now, the image info section is where you can add image uh, information about the image. 
that is supposed to appear above and below the image. But have we changed the text to be a of an invisible color now? No, detail text should be there. So, you sh oh, there's no, yeah, it helps if I have something there. So let's click on equipment, because that will then show what it was shot with. Okay. Because um, I had no title, there's no title on the image, obviously, that's why it didn't show up. Um, so, as you can see here, I say file name. So the file name will show up on the bottom. Okay. So you can have any metadata in there. Um, if you want, you go edit, and you can just select from your metadata using the text template editor. So you could choose your copyright information, for example, or keywords, or any of this stuff that appears here can be up over below your image. Um, somebody was asking what metadata to add uh, to their images. Well, whatever you want people to see, basically. Yeah. Uh, so if you want people to know what it was shot with, and um, I'm happily showing this because it's my brand new 50 to 140 <laughs> Fuji lens that I just bought. <laughs> Nicole just had that one on our photo walk the other night in Portland. She was loving it. It is. It's so sharp. It is gorgeous. Um, and then, to get them as a sponsor now. <laughs> <laughs> so output settings are the output settings. Uh, actually, no, the output settings can be different on uh, on plugins. I've just thought that because obviously I've written plugins. So you can have your image quality. The image quality dictates how quickly an image will load. The higher the number, the better the quality, but the slower it loads. Uh, you can also uh, include uh, different copyright information that is stored with the image itself. And you can yeah, so will you click the uh, that metadata drop down where it says copyright only there? Yep. So uh, Chad is asking. I think what metadata yeah. is best to include. You kind of have two choices, right? Either you include everything, uh, or only your copyright information, which is only the information entered into the copyright field. Uh, yeah, in in the metadata. Uh, yeah. So. Um, well, that's here though, but we could we could do it differently if we export and upload pictures directly to a an online album, right? Well, I'm just saying in the web gallery. Mm -hmm. um, what Lightroom is d giving you the option here. So Sean is saying you can display different metadata on the page, and that's cool because that's yeah. actually what would get uh, caught in a search engine uh, like Google. But if you wanted to embed metadata with your photos, um, so when you upload a, via the web gallery here, um, the web module, I'm sorry, in that little, that little drop-down that Sean just showed, you, you have two choices, copyright only, which strips out your... Uh, your EXIF metadata, your keyword, your title caption, uh, your camera information, your, any, I don't know, any, any other, everything, 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 except for, except for that copyright field. Or you can include every single thing, including all your develop adjustments and your right. GPS metadata and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's an all or nothing kind of. So what's best to include? Well, here, if... If you are, if you have any, if you have, the, if you're one of those people who fantasize that people will actually look at the metadata of your image, <laughs> so, so that they could contact you, um, then you would choose all, right? Because that hopefully it has your contact information and your copyright information. Uh, if you're more of a realist, <laughs> you don't think anyone's going to look, then I guess having just your copyright probably is fine. But um, I don't know. I guess I go, I go more on the all side in the hope that you know it's better to have it in there, but. You know, I'm also I'm a realistic optimist. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, sorry to to uh, diverge there, Sean. Ah, yeah, no worries. Uh, the next thing after that, anyway is uh, watermarking. So you can have this is just a basic text watermark, but uh, you can choose from any of the millions that I've created here messing. <laughs> um, it's and so one easy one word on that own. since since I'm good at jumping in. So yep. uh, that's another place where people ask questions on the watermarking. So. That simple copyright watermark that Shauna had up there first, that just pulls from the copyright field in the metadata. So if you yep. add that in, I think Sean had a copyright to 2015 type of thing, standard, um, that automatically gets pulled. Otherwise, like the one he has now, you, have, you can dial in uh, via the watermark editor and, and get, create all kinds of custom watermarks uh, mm -hmm. If you want to control the size, the font, the color, the placement, then you need to go into the editor and work your magic. Otherwise, you're going to get one tiny little white text in the lower left corner uh, just pulled from your copyright field. 
Yeah. And you can obviously change positions and things like that with the watermark and things like that. Yeah. And there's big arguments over people using watermarks or not. Yeah. I put a small watermark on it just so people know if you if they want to look at stuff. If people are going to steal your image. Yeah. There's nothing that's going to stop them. A watermark's right. not going to stop them. No, no. Yeah. yeah, well, it's one of those things, right? It's a, it, There's a, a series of trade-offs in every one of these decisions. You're making, like, for you said, like with, with quality, you know, uh, File size, download speed, upload speed yeah. versus quality for the viewer. Uh, watermark is branding, but is it distracting? Um, and then from visibility in terms of opacity to size, you know, there's all these kind of trade-offs. You and there's no one right answer, I don't think. Um, some people love the watermark, some people hate the watermark, but you just need to figure out what where your happy place is um, right. in in that spectrum of feeling like it's protecting or branding versus distracting and not distracting, you know, you've got to got to figure all those things out. So, sorry, again, I digress. <laughs> We're nearly there at the end of this. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, basically the sharpening is, is next, and you've got three options, low, standard, or high, and you can't preview the sharpening. It's only applied when you actually create mm -hmm. the gallery. And, and the way you create the gallery is uh, by either exporting or upload. Export will basically put it on a folder on your drive and you can use FTP or upload will use the settings in your upload settings to put it online and to do that you need to uh, basically set up your FTP so like here's a, what a typical FTP setting would look like. Mm. Um, so it, it tells you where it's going to go on the server, your, what your FTP address is, where it is and um, this one here where it says this password will be stored in plain text, even though you can't see the password uh, here and it's stored in the preset, if somebody knows where to look, they can find your preset, so generally don't do this. I don't mind this because it's a demo uh, area. So Now, the thing about it is that it's terrible. Upload is awful. <laughs> I'm going I'm to be really honest here. Even when I was preparing for this and I was uh, setting up to upload one or two sample galleries, it just kept tripping over itself. Yeah. So I ended up having to go through an, an FTP program. Yeah. Uh, and it's FTP programs are far more, more robust uh, than uh, the upload. Now, upload has gotten better over the years, but it still isn't as good as a dedicated FTP program. Yeah. The, the only benefit of this is that it's built into Lightroom. That's the only benefit. It's built in. <laughs> you don't have to have something extra. Yeah. And right, so. if it works, it works. If it doesn't, like Sean says... Um, yeah. So, Sean, we we talk about the ex maybe you were going to do that. Just highlight the export button. Yep. So, if you can't upload via Lightroom for whatever reason, you click you export. You click export, and that just saves all those files out, all the HTML, all the code, all the thumbnails, all the large size, everything in a nice little package. And then you would use a third-party FTP client to upload that to your hosting. Yeah. And, and this, like this mug mug is not that kind of thing, right? No, right. We really can't use this in SmugMug or Zenfolio. Uh, no, it has to be on a dedicated host, hosted site. Something like Squarespace might or might not? Uh, I don't think so, because I'm not... So they Squarespace. use all templates and stuff, right? Yeah, it's all template-driven, and I don't think there's an, even an FTP of this, you know, to upload web pages to Squarespace. I'm not a Squarespace expert, but I... Maybe that's changed, but that's I think I think they do give you hosting spaces. Well, I was I was looking into it yesterday or the day before, um, uh, but I think they do give you space as well. So you possibly could, but I don't know for sure. But they they would probably answer your question if you, if they asked, right, yeah. because they come back to me very quickly when I was asking about VAT stuff. So. Yeah. So I'm going to jump and just show very quickly the other galleries that are there yeah. because I'm seeing that it's now ten to seven. Oh my gosh! <laughs> right. So the next one is the grid gallery. Now here's the thing, as soon as you change a gallery, and if you go back to that gallery, we'll see all of our settings are gone. Okay? Oh no, so if you, it doesn't save so where you were last time. It doesn't save, if you change galleries, it doesn't save where you were. So if you want to save settings, you have to go over here to the right hand side, into the template browser, where you would click template. plus, and then save a template, and let's call, let's call it grid. Give it a name. Now this is obviously just saving the, what is the normal template. Right. Um, that is the only way you have of saving the settings initially. And when you're finished, you can also come over here and create saved web gallery. And um, so let's just say, do that. Create saved web gallery. 
and I'm just going to call this fair. Include only used photos. Okay. So this now comes down here and it shows up in our collections with this tiny, tiny little kind of grid icon. So you know that that is a web gallery. Mm -hmm. So if you are out in the library, uh, double click on that will open the web gallery inside of the web module. Cool. All right. So that's just just a quick mention on how you can actually save what's going on. But yeah. as you go, if you if you have a look that you want to repeat for other galleries for different galleries, you save it as a template so that you can reuse that look. Gotcha. All right. Hey, There's sorry. Very... Yep. What, while you're there, would you show your um, LRB exhibition, the one okay. that you're, you're willing to give away as a prize? Yeah. Well, I was I was going to just show the other ones really really quickly anyway. Okay. So, yeah. Good. So because I'm just going to pop through. Basically, and say that there's very, very little uh, options in the grid gallery, or even the other two of the new galleries. So you've got a gallery title, a gallery author, and a URL, which becomes a link. You can change the colors. You can change the size of the thumbnails, uh, and what kind of how how many, how many pages you're using, basically. So it's it's quite simple in comparison. I'll just show you the other two very quickly. Uh, so the square gallery is next, and it basically just creates a, a track of square uh, thumbnails. Mm. And you click on that, and it opens up in a window that fits the whole size of your gallery. The track is a, a normal size version of that, and the way it's restricted is that your height is restricted. So vertical images are smaller, and horizontal images are longer, basically. But they're all restricted to the same height, and you, cho you choose the height down here yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's the same idea when you click on the image. It opens up in a single page, which is kind of floating over the main page. Uh, it takes up the whole page. You have arrow keys, so you can change things like the colors of the arrows, uh, things like that. All right, so that's those are the four built-in galleries. So as you can see, they're quite simple. Yeah. All right. So the next step is to go and get a third-party gallery that does something slightly different. So here's one from Photographer's Toolbox, which is photographerstoolbox.com. And there's just there's a ton of stuff on Photographer's Toolbox for Lightroom. There's not just the web engines. There's some really excellent plugins there for yep. export and managing stuff. I mean, it's just really top shelf stuff there. Yeah, just just a, a lot, a lot. It's all metadata plugins as well, and yeah. uh, just even uh, uh, there's like dedicated plugins for metadata uh, for creating file information with metadata as well, and then. Uh, Synchromatic plugin lets you sync uh, metadata settings between different files and all this sort of stuff. It's very, very good. Yeah, so Jigsaws is just basically using uh, a jigsaw layout. So basically, uh, you can change some of the bits of the layout. So you can have fixed number of columns. Uh, you can set the thickness of the outlines, what the margins are like. The more image you have, so it builds on top of each other like a jigsaw. Mm -hmm. so I'm just going to hide this panel cool. for a second. Um, so that would just export as, uh, again, as a single gallery. Uh, I have a, a basic one called Showcase. Now this is a version which isn't out yet, and um, because I've just added stuff to it. And um, so the idea with this one is that as I change the size of the window, the images change size. Oh, that's very attractive. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you have a little hover section with information on it, and then you can have a few different links as well, basically. So, and um, the idea is that you could put up two or three versions of this gallery and use the links to link between the different galleries. Right, um, so I also have ones that make websites. So this is Portfolio. And these are all, all these LRB galleries are ones you built. Right? These are ones I've, I've, I've written. So, yeah. um, and I was using them for my website for a very, very long time until I just started to need something for a, more for a blog. So this the idea with this is it creates a website that allows you to showcase your images is what it's for. Um, so what you do is basically you start off, you've got information, so you set up information for your home page, which is this, and there's a couple of different types of home pages you can have. You can have it as a gallery index, um, so it shows the galleries that are available. Now, by default, it only has a single first image because it's just avoiding getting errors in it by showing lots of images. Mm. So you can have a home page, you can have an about page. There's two blank pages so that you can use them to actually embed your blog in it if you want, or you can have like a a prices page or stuff like that. So if I click on this to include the page, or it will show up. Uh, so, oh no, this is a demo version of the gallery, so it won't show the blacks. I haven't put in my my code for it. I thought I had. <laughs> All right. But basically, it will let you um, put in extra pages. Yeah. And you can have up to seven galleries. Um, and the way it works is that 
you basically, I'll show you in gallery once, you can say that what's the gallery index number, so that's the number of the images along uh, inside the grid. So I go to the grid, um, and I'm actually going to go back to everything for a second. Uh, all images for a second. So I go back to the grid, and you can see here there's a number on it. So you literally just copy the number that you want from there into, into it. Um, and then the number of images, it's after jumping back, lovely. Uh, jump down here. Uh, flag photos, all photos. So that's how it's going to change, obviously. So the number of images, that you're telling Lightroom how many images are in this gallery. So you could have 20, 30, 40, 50. I think the maximum is about 1,000, I think, per gallery. But then it takes ages for the galleries to load. So what you do is you can give it a name, and if you change the name, uh, that will now change up top. Uh, if we force a reload, do we? Shouldn't have to force a reload. Uh, oh, gallery headline, gallery text. Oh, no, I know what's going on here. It helps if I type in the right place. <laughs> it always oh. helps. Yeah, well, the, the gallery headline is if you go into, um, if you go into the gallery, um, there's an option here for gallery text, and if you include gallery text, that's the gallery text there, so you can write a bit about the actual gallery if you want. Um, so basically you can have up to seven galleries in it, uh, with as many images as you want. You've got control over uh, just also two links that you can add, as well as the internal links. Um, you've got lots of control over the different fonts and font sizes throughout the image. Some SEO stuff, and Google, you can add Google Analytics. Or if you're not using Google Analytics and you, can, you want to use something else, you've got additional footer code that you can just cut and paste. Um, different controls for the menu. So you, you've got a lot of control over what you can do with the look of the image. Oh. So the colors can be changed. Uh, you have your logo, which can be added part of it. Stuff like background images. You can also decide that you want, if you want it to be a fixed width site, you can have it as a fixed width site. And the galleries themselves are side scrollers like that. Hmm. There's also a thing called C Motion, so you can actually use the scroller, and you can turn on auto scrolls to so it'll automatically scroll when you mouse over it. So that's basically a very very quick look at exhibition, which is the gallery I'm giving away. Uh, another version of a website plugin that I have is. Uh, show where we're now exhibition so this is a quick look at exhibition so that basically oh, awesome. Very nice. yeah. yeah so, so like the menus on the on the bottom here with this and what you can do is you can also do lots, I'll just show you what the gallery looks like very quickly here I'm just gonna shift tab for a second to bring it out so we can see more what's going on so so we have basically like arrows it looks it looks kind of similar to what some of the new um, yeah, Lightroom ones are, but this has been made a lot longer than that. Yeah. It's also an option for a slideshow mode where it'll actually automatically play, and you have an option to jump between different images that are in the gallery. Now, there are demo versions of both of these galleries on uh, Photographer's Toolbox, so you can actually download it and play it with it, um, but it's limited to 10 images and one gallery. So that's just to let you know what's happening with that. And... Very quickly then, just to talk about other people's galleries, because uh, I know somebody has to go. Um, <laughs> Matthew Campanias, which we're talking about, yeah, um, the Client Response Gallery. So this is the TurningGate.net. The TurningGate.net. TurningGate.net. These are, these are stunning pictures too, by the way, Sean. Oh, thanks. These were shot for uh, Fiona Mangan Millinery, who's a local milliner here and who uh, wins loads of awards for her stuff. Her stuff is gorgeous. That was from not... Not the most she's recent a, campaign, the previous she's a what? campaign. She's a local um, nooner? Milliner. Oh, that's milliner. A, that's, that's a hat, hat maker. Right, hat maker. That's a, hat, you should, a you women's should, hat maker. You should, you should know that. No, I, I do know. I do. It's a <laughs> hat maker. Haberdasher is a men's hat Oh, okay. See, now I just <laughs> Thank you, guys. Okay. So now CE4, the new one, when you open it first, you kind of look at it and go, what's going on? But really what it is is there's a, a plug-in reference that lets you Get, read through it to figure out what's going on. And the way you can change it for how it's supposed to look is you change from quick reference here in the site info section to page preview. And then as this says here, press command or to update. So I was mentioned that you had to do that to actually update. So I'm going to force the update. And it should give me a page preview. So Sean, would you say it's fair to say that the, the plugins that or the web engines that you've created 
are similar to the ones that come with Lightroom in that they're standalone. Well, they're a little more than that. Some of your gallery ones. Well, but, like the way, the way, the way, yeah, the way they're designed is they will give you a whole website from one collection. That's yeah. the way that those two are designed. And, uh, and whereas uh, CE4 is a whole suite of plugins that build up yeah. to give you lots of different options for what you want. Yeah. Client response gallery is it gives you a chance to put galleries online where your client can come in and make selections of your images that they want you to retouch and send back to you. I've used the older version, uh, version 3, for a very, very long time for my own client work, and that I'm still using version 3 uh, because I haven't got used to version 4 yet, basically. But yeah. this version 4 is far more powerful. Version 4 allows you to use published services, so you can actually upload directly to the galleries via public services. And the auto index plugin here will, uh, when that's installed on the website, it actually will detect the new gallery and create a link for it inside the auto index gallery, which is like uh, basically a gallery index page. So it's a suite of plugins that build up, and it, like uh, we're looking at like $25 versus $100 in terms of my plugin right. and Matt's plugin. But Matt's plugin does far more than my one does. Yeah, Matt's Matt's plugin. I mean, it's it it is amazing what he's managed to do inside of Lightroom um, with with his plugin. I mean, it's really. I mean, there's a WordPress theme you can generate. There's a there's a server side communication. I mean, there's if you really yeah, want to wow. manage an entire website through Lightroom, uh, the TurnGate.net yeah. is is your really the place you want to check out. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, it's a, a full-blown system. It's not just a, a gallery. So it's giving you the whole back end on your website yeah. as well as being able to manage the galleries themselves inside Lightroom. Yeah, and so um, so Matthew, Matt has given us generously uh, a copy of his proofing, CE4 proofing uh, gal uh, plugin. So it's so about it's, $100 value. It's, yeah. it's a pretty... But this, this, is, this is part of it here as well, so what you're seeing. Yeah. Um, and the idea is that you can put in for information and you can make selections as well. And that information comes back to you in Lightroom and you can apply the information to the images uh, so that you, the feedback goes back into Lightroom for you, which is yeah. incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. Like Terry White, uh, Adobe Evangelist, uh, uses Matt's uh, plugins for his website. Um, you know, so they're they're really pretty excellent. So. Sean, that's tremendous. I mean, it's we could we could go on for another hour, but here we are <laughs> at the end of our hour. Um, yeah. And so I know Levi's got to get going, and we got to announce we've got five. Is it five prizes? I'm not sure how many prizes four. there are, but I have yes. four. I think there's four or three. There's Matt's, uh, the photo uh, photography CC plan, and and Sean's plugin. All right, so there's three, three prizes, three prizes. Okay. Do you want to read off those names, Levi? You betcha. Okay, tell me the order. Which which prize is first? All right. So first, let's start with Sean's plugin, which Excellent. is uh, LRB exhibition. Correct. All right. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. And, and that one. Or is, or if they prefer to have portfolio, whichever. Okay. One of Sean's Excellent. plugins. And what we'll do is we're going to give the winner's name and email to Sean, and he will hook you up. So right. if 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 Levi. If Levi says your name, what do you have to do? Step one, weigh in in the Q&A and tell us you are still here because you must be present to win. Do your game show run, screaming right. down the aisle, and show up in the Q&A. And then you're going to do what, Le Le Levi? They're going to email you're, you? You're going to email Rob. Oh, okay, you're going to email Rob. <laughs> Rob, Rob at, at photofocus. Rob at photofocus.com. Perfect. Email me with your name. That's Say it. Be nice. Say hello. Say what's up. Yes. And, and, and tell, uh, tell Rob which prize you won. And then I will connect you with the, the appropriate people. And Jack, you too. We got you covered, buddy. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> all right so, so, sorry. First one. First one is Ken Tannenbaum. Ken. Congratulations, Ken. Ken. Plug in. Yeah. All right. Show up and tell us you're here, Ken. Who else? What's next? So next okay. would be um, Matt's plug-in. Oh, good. The other, yeah, the the, the, the attorney. Right. Yep. TTG. And that goes to Deb Snelson. Deb. All right. She tuned in just to just to get entered in the prize, and there she is. <laughs> and then the, prize. the uh, photo photography CC subscription for one year. 
Oh, this goes to Professor Mary. And did she have a question in there too? Yeah, oh, that was so Susan. Susan asked if you could have Lightroom Mobile on more than one device. And yes, you can have it on infinite devices as far as yeah. I can tell. Yeah, no, you just log in with your Adobe ID and password on your device. Mm -hmm. So like if I had Levi's username and password, I could log in on my device and, and see all his stuff. So That's right. um, any number of devices. So how about we do a lightning round of questions really quick. Levi, if you have to go. I do need to go. Well, why don't you, Levi, where can we find and Ken's you? Ken's here. We got, we got Ken. Ken's right, here. So Ken's in. And, oh, Jim's still here, but he didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will track the winners. Levi, All right. Us, where can we find you? When? Oh, thank you. Uh, you can find me on PhotoFocus. I write for PhotoFocus.com, and uh, I'd love to Get your input on articles there. Also, you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at Photo Levi. Instagram is is where I I keep up, and then uh, those go out to the other places from there. So, thanks Excellent. very much for joining us. Thanks, Levi. We'll talk to you later. Sean, do you have a minute to help me do a lightning round of questions here? Yeah. All right, great. So we see that uh, Ken is here. Good. Ken is checked off, and so let's look at some questions real quick. Oh, and Mary is still here. Great. Um, so Mary's asking, what do you, capital all caps, recommend for a setting for the output settings for quality in a web gallery? Or well, been a, the default that are in the original Lightroom uh, galleries is 70, um, but they've changed it now to 75. So I think 75 is a good balance of quality and size for a speedy download. Excellent. All right. Uh, Susan asked... Uh, Okay, we, we answered that one already. You can have it on as many devices. Good, good. Is there a workaround for syncing smart collections to Lightroom Mobile? The short answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> the long answer is no, too. <laughs> well, no, you can, you can just copy stuff into a normal collection on yeah. a regular basis. That's all, you, that's all you can do. Yeah, so it's a manual automated process. Um, all right, and did we hear from Deb? Deb, did you show up? Somewhere, Deb. Oh, she's still here. Great. So Deb won too. So we heard from our three winners. Excellent. So let's see. Any other questions that we haven't covered? How does uh, it I handle? Think you... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, don't forget to tell her that she needs to email you. Oh yeah. So you, you three winners, email me, Rob at photofocus.com, and um, I will connect you with the people to get you the stuff. And Jack, we got you too. All right. All right, so how does it handle the thumbnails? Are they generated by Lightroom just using HTML? I ask because I am curious if users are downloading the entire image when viewing the grid, which would add more weight to the quality. Oh, I see what you're saying. So he's asking, do they, does the, the gallery yeah, no, generate yeah, yeah, the thumbnails? Yeah, the thumbnails are created separately. Yeah, so when you save out or upload yeah. that gallery, it saves out thumbnails and it saves out the larger version. It does not upload full size of your images. No, no. All right, so hopefully I answer your question. Craig, uh, Kenneth is asking, should you have actually copyrighted an image before using the copyright field in Lightroom? Well, this is a could be a potentially longer answer, but the short answer would be no, right? So um, as soon as you create an image, you own the copyright. Uh, it is not registered. That's a separate, a separate step to register the copyright. Is there a way to register copyright like that in Ireland? No. Yeah. No, you're, so, auto, you're automatically a rights, rights holder as soon as you take the image. Yeah, so the same in the States, but in the States, if you say you, say I, say Sean was living in the States and I stole his image, I was using it in something, and he said, hey, you stop doing that, and he tried to take me to court. If he hadn't registered his copyright here in the States, it would be a lot harder for him to have a case uh, to, for me to, I wouldn't, I, he wouldn't be able to get me to pay damages, he might be able to get me to stop using it, but so there's an additional step for registering. It's a totally separate conversation, but you can put that little copyright symbol and the date and your name. Uh, if you took the photo, you can do it. You don't have to do anything more uh, before that. So, Although if I was to sue you in an Irish court where the law is different, I could get lots of damages. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> so don't mess with Ireland. Uh, they will kill you. All right. Um, yeah, but it, you know it's a small world, so I mean that's it. it definitely, it, it's worth being somewhat familiar with how. And and just to that point, if Sean wanted to, he could register his image here in the states. Yeah, I could, to, but he, he certainly could. 
All right. Uh, are there shortcuts for go to folder in library and expand slash collapse all folders? Um, if you go in, in Lightroom under the window panel menu, there's a bunch of shortcuts, you know, under panels. Maybe that's what you're asking for to yeah. jump into panels. So, well, there's for go to folder and library. There's no shortcut. Of all the yeah. things, I wish there was a shortcut for. Yeah, that would be. That is one of them. Yeah, because I use that quite regularly. And um, there's no way to expand or class folders via shortcut either as well. It's a, it's a manual task. Yeah, a lot of manual things in here. So, uh, let's see. So, Elena, you've got a question that is going to take a little more than lightning round to answer. Let me just make sure. Mary asked one more. Can I add a comment about a photo while posting to Facebook? I'm assuming she means during through the uh, published service. Well, I think the answer is yes and no. So the default plugin for Facebook that comes with Lightroom, I don't think you can. You can set that up so that the title, uh, if you've entered a title via the IPTC metadata, that title can become the title of the image. But I don't think you can actually add a comment during the upload process. Afterwards, you can um, in a comment. But I think. Um, Jeffrey Friedel has a Lightroom plugin. I mean, yeah, Lightroom plugin for Facebook that I think is a little more robust, and you might might have a little more options there. I'm not familiar with all. Do you, do you use that one, Sean? Uh, I have been using that one. I haven't used it recently, though. But there are a lot more options, and you can choose from a range of stuff that can go on as the title of the image that goes up. Yeah. So if you, I forget uh, Jeffrey's website, top of my head. But if uh, you just Lightroom goodies, reg, reg, regex. Reg yeah, and that's why I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. If you do, a, if you do a Google search for Lightroom goodies, uh, Facebook, you'll find his stuff. It usually is right yeah, up. It's there. A, it's a, it's r e g e x i n f o slash blog slash Lightroom dash goodies. Wow, you're good. You're good. I try. <laughs> that's excellent. Um, and he's got a bunch of plugins too, as well. Uh, which, yeah, loads. Of stuff. He's the king of plugins. Yeah. All right. So. Um, the last question, Elena, I don't know if we can even answer um, because I'm not sure I know enough. But she's using a smart collection, and she's not finding that all the images are appearing. Uh, and I'm guessing maybe she has a keyword-based smart collection with a T underscore T as the keyword. I don't know. Sean, do you... I'm guessing that there's something in the rule yeah, that's it, not right. It, yeah, it, it, there are some illegal characters that I might have problems with. But when the use of the word syncing makes me think is syncing, I, I always think in terms of Lightroom Mobile and stuff, yeah. um, which won't sync smart collections anyway. Um, but without more detail on the question, I can't really. Yeah. So a, Elena, if answer. you're still if you're still listening, if you want to add more information in the comment page on the event page here on Google+. Plus. Uh, I can try and follow up with you there. So thanks, everyone. Thank you, Sean, for staying a little later and going through that somewhat lightning round. Um, oh, yeah. so Sean, where, where can we find out more about you and your plugins and your book and all the stuff you're doing? Uh, two websites, anyway. So the Lightroom stuff is lightroom-blog.com. Uh, nice and easy. And then seanmacphoto.com is my photo website where my photo stuff is. And down on my lower third is where you can find information about the book. A nice little yeah. short bitly link. And uh, you got any workshops or trips? Anything com coming up where uh, we can see you? Up, I'm doing in uh, Essex in uh, just north of London. I think it's north of London. Um, I'm doing a talk on the, the 16th. Uh, it'll be a whole day of uh, lighting setups and then Lightroom and third party presets afterwards. And in uh, January, I'll be doing a talk at the SWPP convention, which is a huge convention. So I have three talks there, one on landscapes, one on lighting, and one on Lightroom. Excellent. So if you go to lightroom-blog.com and you sign up for my newsletter, there you, you get go. all of that information. <laughs> I had Excellent. one up yesterday to tell people this was happening. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you, John, so much for everything you shared and for the prize you donated and uh, the book. I wish you all the best with that, and I really appreciate you taking the time to, to spend an hour plus with us today. So yeah, no uh, take good care. Everyone, thank you. Check out photofocus.com. Uh, lots of stuff there. All of our past Hangouts are archived. There's a whole Lightroom Learning Center that's just chock full of all that stuff, so check it all out. And that's a good place to find me, too, or lightroomers.com is a blog that I sometimes get around to updating. <laughs> I'm really bad, really bad about that. So anyway, uh, see you all next month. And we haven't figured out that time and date yet, but we'll post it on PhotoFocus when we do. Take care. Bye-bye.
All right, so Levi is...